Hello, my name is Jamie of Freely Give, and welcome to the introduction to the AI module. Uh, here you can find the AI module, it's at project slash AI, uh, and we have an alpha version out uh, as of 19th of June. So come along, try it out. Um, this little talk, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into the core features of the module, um, talk about timelines and where we're planning to go. So the aim of this module is it provides all the foundational functionality that you will need to build powerful and magical uh, features or AI powered applications from simple to complex with little to no code, but also giving you the expected out of the box experience to get you started. We're hoping it to be a bit like an API module. Where we'll have all of these tools ready for you to build AI applications and it will start very simple. You'll be able to build something that looks great with just the pure core AI module. But what we've found is that if you're going to do anything complex, anything in production, there's some slightly more advanced tools that we believe that you'll eventually need to really push it over the line. And so by bringing everything together in one place, you can start simple, but when you need it, those things will not only be there, they'll, everything will work together very nicely. Um, it's not just an API module. Out of the box, we're giving you some very basic functionality, but the things that you'd expect from an AI module uh, in the Drupal community, like chatbots and content editing tools, etc. So um, it started from, uh, we've all been working on this thing for about a year and a half now, separately. Um, Kevin with the OpenAI module got to a thousand views, really pioneered AI um, in Drupal. Uh, Freely Give, we've done this search API AI, and I've given some talks at Dev Days about it that helps you uh, search your content. Um, Marcus has been pioneering the AI interpolator that helps you do automation, um, and um, and he's recently joined Freely Give. Uh, Scott has been helping with the OpenAI embeddings again to do search. Uh, so we've all worked together, but now seems like a good time for us to join our forces and bring them together. So all these modules you see here, we're going to be folding them into the AI module. Uh, there's a couple of URLs here if you want to contact us. Particularly recommend workflows of AI if you want to take a look at the automation stuff that you can do. Marcus has posted a good 50 to almost 100 videos of things you could do with uh, sort of AI applications you can do, like, I don't know, converting WordPress um, into Drupal, etc. Like all of these little tools. Um, so I recommend there to give you some ideas and tutorials if you want to get going with it. Um, and there's plenty of other people in the community who has helped us recently. Code reviews, ideas. I want to focus on uh, Michael, SEO Gao, uh, who he provided the LLM provider, which is the basis of the AI module. Uh, and he's also going to be really focusing on search. Now, the actual core module is an AI provider. It's more than just LLMs. It provides image, audio models, etc. Uh, and we work with a number of different types of providers. So the classic third party provider like Claude OpenAI that just has a API that you send to and it sends the information back. Um, we're working with, um, we're gonna work on model libraries. That's not there yet, but we're gonna work with like Hugging Face and it's almost 700,000 models that you'll be able to pull in and a UI for that, as well as some of the bigger ones like Amazon Bedrock and Azure AI. And very importantly for the privacy conscious and people in the open source community, self-hosted. So Olama and LM Studio, particularly uh, Olama is going to be really key, but it's a little bit more complicated to build. So in the short term, we're going to have LM Studio, uh, which will allow you to download models onto your computer, uh, your own personal machine, and then try those out. Um, this is what we have so far. Um, there'll be some more modules being added here. Um, and the first thing you're going to want to do is set up a provider. So this is an example of an open AI provider. We use the key module to keep everything safe. Um, and just one little comment about open AI and Claude with both of them. Um, this is not entirely a abstraction layer. It's a little bit opinionated. We try and give you great sensible defaults out of the box to get you going. We're expecting this to be used by seasoned developers, but also people who are just trying things out and clicking around, etc. So as a result of that, we put on moderation by default. We think this is very important. Uh, there's a good chance if you don't moderate your prompts before you send them to the provider, uh, you could get banned permanently and maybe never get it back, uh, especially if you're a small organization. Um, with OpenAI, you can turn it off. Um, it's free to use anyway, so you can turn it off through code. With Anthropic, it costs money, so you, you know, we, we are allowing you to turn it off, but we have all these checks. Um, one thing to note, temporarily, we're using OpenAI's moderation for Claude. So please be a little bit careful with it because OpenAI's moderation won't be exactly the same as Claude. It's just as of last week, Claude um, got rid of their moderation layer and a new one is coming. 
So for a small period of time, you need to be a little bit careful with just throwing Claude out there to your users um, as uh, if people start trying to jailbreak it or put in harmful content, um, it could impact you as an organization. So just be a little bit careful. Now, out of the box, we have these prompt explorers. You, you might have seen them in OpenAI, little places just mainly to test. We're hoping to build this out to be more of a developer tool so you can really do some serious prompt engineering. You can see it's a little bit more advanced than what came with OpenAI, but we're hoping to make it more like a full playground experience. On the left-hand side, you'll be able to just type in your prompt, ask AI and see it reply in the middle. And on the right-hand side, we can see you can select the different LLM providers, the different models. Here's all the settings that you can do. Um, and so you can try out that same prompt, but try out all the different models, especially when we have Hugging Face, you might want to try out with quite a lot of different models. Um, now, here we can see, as I said, it's not just LLMs. We've also got image. In fact, we've got a huge, uh, quite a large number of uh, explorers. Here you can type in a prompt and get an image uh, out of it, uh, but also save that image into your media library. We've got some improvements to here, the UX improvements that will make this even easier in the future. But it means that this is more than just a simple um, uh, demo. It's something that you might actually find is a nice way of using things and, and putting things into Drupal. And here's a text to speech generator. Um, uh, again, supports quite a lot of models. So this is what we have so far. Uh, the different explorers there. We're going to expand this, especially make the process of installing the module a lot uh, more streamlined. Now, Michael has been working with AI search and really pioneering that. Um, he's done a lot of work with some of the more complicated ways of doing AI search, something called Llama Index. And so he's going to be taking the search API AI module that we've got and really making it robust and making it very pluggable and making it work with everything that you kind of expect. At the moment, it breaks a little bit uh, in certain situations. But here's a little demo that we made. This is a project browser powered by AI. So we're using the project browser module sort of pulling the code onto our own local system. And then we've got a chatbot that indexes all your code into a database, again, stored on your own system and allows you to talk to it. So here's something where my one-time logins in Drupal fail when I use Outlook. Do you know what module I could use to fix this? And it's more than just search. It also gives you answers based around the information in your system. So this can help you find things, um, but also it will allow you to do things like make a customer support bot that uses technical manuals on the product that the person's downloaded to provide answers. Out of the box, we're going to do pure what we call semantic search. It will be a views filter. It will be similar to this, where you'll type in what you want to click apply. And this uses something called um, embeddings and vector search to find things, but it's using it based around the meaning. It's not just a word search. It understands the meaning of the term that you have and is finding content in your system that has a similar meaning. Uh, that will go out first. And then we're going to add in LLMs to make it more conversational. Finally, Michael plans to really push this, see what we can get from Llama Index into Drupal, and start doing really complicated advanced rag, modular rag, having LLM agents like look at your question beforehand and do all these complicated things. So again, this fits with our design pattern. Out of the box, you can do a simple thing. Get yourself up and running. But as you start working on this more, there'll be more and more complex tools that you can, you can easily bring in to the same place, same no code situation, and take advantage of the real innovations in AI. And as you can see, it's all working with Search API. We think it's whole way of working, it's user experience, the, the UI, way of selecting content is amazing. So it's gonna require Search API. And um, you can see here, we are using embeddings and we've got vector databases such as Milvus uh, to actually index everything. Now, Marcus, as I said, has been pioneering AI Interpolator. It's going to be called AI Automators in the AI module. And this is a simple module that is also very, that can do very interesting, complex stuff that you go to a field settings and you can just click this button and they enable AI Automators, it will be called. And this allows you to fill or modify the contents of that field based around a prompt that you send. Again, working with the abstraction layer can use any model. But because we can have uh, tokens in this, it actually allows you to chain prompts. And so get an AI to do one op operation, put it in a field somewhere, and then get the second field to use AI again to do something else. Like you might want to transcribe a video for the first time and then have AI summarize it and then have AI generate LinkedIn posts off of that. And this is a chain and we can use tokens to do this. Uh, here's an example where we have built a 
um, a simple demo where it's for event organizers and we're analyzing venues and we're looking at Google reviews. We pulled them in from Google into a field and now we're going to summarize those fields. Um, the thing that's powerful about this is it's very Drupal-y. It's very organic. It does actually allow really complex workflows with branching all over the place. Um, uh, but although it allows for that, you don't have to plan that from the beginning. You can just create your field, think about the prompt, and then when you think, actually, I'd really like to use the, that field over there, or I haven't created it yet, you just go and create that and then pull in the field later on. If you need more complex, more planned workflows, this will work with the ECA module. And the ECA module is a fantastic place to do these kind of complicated workflows. And then it even has some visual tools that will allow you to build those things. And so we'll see whether or not this simpler approach using fields is the way that people like to go or something that uses more, more visual workflows, etc., or blend of both. But it's not just prompts. Um, uh, Marcus have worked on a whole collection of almost 100 different plugins and third party services that you can use to pull things in and change your fields using uh, non LLM powered automators, but it's all in the same place. So here's an example of something that is using a depth crawler. So it's a website scraper. Uh, you can start with the, the URL that you've got and then go however many, uh, follow the links however many ways down in the advanced settings. You can do things like uh, block certain pages and headings. But one thing that is powerful about all, the, all of these is they are built to be used primarily by LLMs. So most website crawlers have very complicated ways of pulling the correct information that you need. Maybe it's the body, maybe it's a specific field. But with AI, we can just pull in the whole HTML that we want to and then require the LLM in the prompt to figure out pulling out the information that you need. And so, so many of these little integrations that we've been doing with Drupal for a long time, using AI automators become much simpler because we can pull in raw, YAML, JSON, uh, HTML, just a random mess of information and then use an LLM to filter it out and put it into the correct places and the correct fields in Drupal. Um, a lot of you are going to be wanting this. Um, in OpenAI, it's very popular, these tools. And so you can see a, a graphic of uh, what comes with the OpenAI module, and we will absolutely be supporting it in Drupal. Um, in, in the AI module, it includes tools like to summarize, translate, or review things, um, categorize, or, um, or suggest taxonomy outside of CK Editor in little widgets. Um, but what we're going to do is eventually, maybe in about a month's time, integrate this with AI automators and search. So in the OpenAI module at the moment, it's all hard-coded. It just suggests taxonomy. It doesn't do anything with those things. But um, with AI Interpolator, you'll be able to make it so that as a, as a, in, in the prompt, you'll be able to click a button sort of around here, go into the prompt, make it use your taxonomy as a context, so it only categorizes things according to that. Or maybe you can use search, uh, AI search to go in and look at previous blog posts that your, your organization has written and, and use that to help define what kind of search uh, metadata it should use or taxonomy. Um, similarly, when you're asking it to summarize things or write some copy, instead of just using the AI, you can make it so that it searches for blog posts that you've written that are similar and uses that to help define the tone or way of speaking or the level of detail you want to go into. So we're, again, we're going to start simple. Out of the box, you'll be able to do what you can see here. But if you need to, really make it work. You can go one step further and start playing with those prompts, using these complex tools, chaining prompts together, etc., etc. This is a little uh, diagram provided by Martin, helping with the uh, AI augmenter um, um, about how it all works together. You can see in the middle is orchestration. This is the thing that goes in and brings all of those things together, all the different prompts, all the different models together, and does something with it. And we really believe that Drupal be a very powerful AI automation tool compared to what exists. Most open source things tend to be code heavy or have not the functionality of Drupal like user management, etc. And the really good orchestration platforms tend to be proprietary and work with uh, that company's own tools. So we think Drupal is going to be powerful there. And you might use ECA or automators, etc. to handle that. There'll be a bunch of different triggers, could be an email coming in, could be a UI like the taxonomy, you click a button. It could be an interface. It could be like a chat window that uh, when certain questions happen, um, uh, the orchestrator does something. You can see the abstraction layer with all the different types. So prompts will be uh, you know text-based prompts of LLMs, etc., with all the different models. And then they have retrievers, tools and sources, and maybe even AI search to help 
provide more context or, or support for those prompts. Now for features and timelines, um, here we have just a little summary. I won't go into loads of detail about it, but the core is already being done, although we are hoping to add more providers over the coming weeks. Um, we're hoping to have AI search by about the 15th of July, uh, the sort of the simpler version with an LLM, uh, and then we'll start exploring more complicated things with RAG, etc. Again, with Automator, hopefully 15th of AI, we're working on that concurrently as there's multiple of us in the team. And then content editing uh, after that. Now, we might have something, uh, uh, the basic, simple OpenAI version of content editing in before that, and then upgrade it to use Automator, etc. Uh, when that comes along. I haven't talked about evaluations yet. Um, it's something that people outside of AI who haven't done um, production things don't think about. But as soon as you start doing this in production, or as soon as you try to sell it to clients, this will be invaluable. So we want to do a framework to help it so you can test your AI prompts against real data, have questionnaires, have A-B testing of comparing different prompts, and build real statistics of how effective your AI is. That was in the core of the module. Outside of it, we're planning to do a bit more. We're going to have uh, advanced content in editing tools. So taking that stuff further, here we have something where we're using chat, where you, you can talk to it and actually edit the web form on the fly. Uh, we could even have it so that you can draw a picture of your web form and it creates it for you and then you use AI to change it. I'm ex we'll try and do something ourselves, but I'm expecting the community will start building these, especially other agencies, as there's going to be lots of different ideal content editing experiences for different situations. Um, we're hoping to work with the experience builder at Drupal Dev Days. So um, if either AI will be in it or in Contrib, we'll make sure the experience builder is structured in such a way that AI can work with it very well. And that means we might be able to doodle components, sketch something, have a design, and send it to the experience builder, and it just makes a Drupal site for you. Maybe um, you'll have prompts, or you'll just have images, or you'll use the web scraper to show a website you've already got and, and how you want to change it. Uh, there's a lot of powerful things we could do with an AI-empowered experience builder. Uh, and finally, a sneak peek into AI agents. Um, uh, this is something that we, we want to work on. Here's a mini Kanban board where you can add an epic. And rather than having the automators, which are very specifically well-defined processes with a prompt, this is an agent that can figure out what it wants to do itself. A project manager agent will take your request, turn it into tasks, and assign it to other agents that you've got on your system. And here we have an example of something where somebody uploads a, um, a PDF full of restaurants, and then this agent is going to create the content type for restaurants um, with its own fields, create the content, make a view with exposed filters, uh, and have it all set up for you all automatically. If you go to our Freely Give channel, you can see these um, some of these videos. They're like one minute, quick one minute videos. Uh, this is a link to one of those. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're on Slack uh, at Hash AI, and obviously this is our the project itself. We're going to be at Drupal Dev Days um, and at DrupalCon Barcelona. We're going to be giving talks, running boss, come and meet us. And then we're hoping to organize one, the first of a regular Drupal AI camp, October the 24th in London. Um, uh, a lot more marketing ab about that and more details will come after Drupal Dev Days. So thank you for this, uh, for bearing with me in this. Uh, hope to see you in AI.